All right, this is grade 5, module 2, lesson 26, in which we are dividing decimal dividends by two-digit divisors. Um, now, this time, we really are using the standard algorithm, although we're going to be using some number sense to get there rather than just jump straight to blindly teaching the standard algorithm. But in this lesson, we are going to be using and teaching that standard algorithm. All right, so first, we're, this is a kind of an interesting problem. We're asked to create two whole number division problems that have a quotient of 9 and a remainder of 5, and then justify which is greater using decimal division. So what that's saying is we know we want to create two examples that have 9 as the quotient and 5 as the remainder. 9 as the quotient, 5 as the remainder. Now, because we have a remainder of 5, that means we need to divide this guy needs to be a number that is 6 or larger, typically. Otherwise, it would kind of be a funky answer. So uh, let's make this one uh, an 8, and let's make this one a 10. And then let's divide, and we're going to justify which is greater using decimal division. So if I want to figure out what goes in here, I'm going to multiply 9 times 8 is 72, plus 5 is 77. And then over here, I want to know what goes there. So I'm going to um, multiply 9 times 10 and get 90, plus 5 is 95. All right. So now we're asked to divide using decimal division. So 77 divided by 8 and 95 divided by 10, and figure out which one is going to be larger. Good, let's go for it. So 8 goes into 77 nine times, so that's 72. We subtract, we have 5 left over, there's our, our confirmation that we did it correctly. But now we're going to keep going. Now that 5 left over is 5 whole numbers. But we can think of it, if we wanted to, we could think of it as 50 tenths. So 8 goes into 50 tenths um, 4 times. All right, so we're going to put that decimal there. So 4 tenths. Um, so 4 times, oh no, no, I did 4. I meant 6. Yikes. Let's change that to a 6. 6 is 48, and we subtract, and we get 2 tenths left over. So then we can think of those 2 tenths as 20 hundredths. So 8 goes into 20 hundredths 2 times. That's 16 with 4 left over, so that's 4 hundredths left over. And then we can keep going and think of those four hundredths as forty thousandths. And eight goes into forty thousandths five times, and we have nothing left over. So there is our final answer for that first problem. Now let's do this second problem, which is um, 95 divided by 10. And I'm going to scooch it up a little bit. All right, so let's start. 10 goes into 95. So we could do 9 times. That's 90 with 5 left over. Yay! So what that tells us is we, oops, um, that tells us that we correctly wrote down the right problem, right? And then we have 5 whole numbers left over. Well, but those 5 whole numbers can really be thought of as 50 tenths. I'm going to put a decimal there. And 50 tenths divided by 10 is 5. And we have nothing left over. And so our answer is 9.5. Now the question is saying which one is greater using decimal division. And we can see that this guy is greater 
because he's got nine holes and six tenths, while this guy only has nine holes and five tenths. All right, we're going to continue just using that standard algorithm to divide, and then we're going to check our work using multiplication. So the first thing we have to do is we're going to write this as 75.9 divided by 22. And uh, a little different, a little departure from the way Engage New York does it. I think of 22. I'm going to round it down to 20. And then I skip count. And I'm going to do 20, 40, 60, 80. And oops, I've reached my goal because I don't want to go past 75. So that means my estimated quotient is going to be 3. So let's give that a try. So I'm going to put 3 here. And way over here on scratch paper, I need to do 22 times 3. And I get 66. So let's see if that works. So I'm going to put 66 here. And I subtract the 2. And I get 9. Yay! Since 9 is less than 22, I don't have to adjust it or anything. So we have nine whole numbers left over, but we also have nine tenths left over, uh, you know, remaining. So that means we have 99 tenths all together. So now we need to take 99 tenths and divide by two. And if I continue my skip counting over here, it looks like ooh, it's either going to be four or five. Let's try four right here because 80 doesn't go over 99. 100 does, but we're estimating, so we don't really know. So let's try 4. So let's do 23, I mean 22, times 4, and that gives us 88. And that seems pretty darn close, so let's see. We're going to put 4 here. 4 times 22 is 88, and we subtract, we get 11. And that's looking good. So now that's 11 tenths. So if we add a zero, that's going to be 110 hundredths. And we're going to continue our skip counting. And it really looks like we're going to go just as far as this right here, because 120 is too much. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it looks like our estimation should be 5. Let's try that. 22 times 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Hey, look at that. We nailed it. So that means we're going to put a 5 right here. Our answer is 110. We have no remainder. Hey, we are done. So the answer is 3.45. But we need to check it using multiplication. So let's do that. So over here, we're going to check it by going 3.45 times 22. So 5 times 10, I mean five. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. Now we're going to put a 0 because we're really multiplying by 20. So 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And 2 times 3 is 6. We add. And since we have two decimal places, we know we're going to have two decimal places in the answer. So 75.9 is exactly what we had over here, So that because technically we don't need that last trailing zero. Uh, that confirms that we've done it correctly. Okay, now we're going to practice some division with a word problem. I love this problem because there's like a bazillion different ways to solve this problem. So uh, let's, let's give it a go. So Elaine has a desktop that is four and a half feet by five and a half feet. So her desktop looks like this, four and a half feet by five and a half feet. All right, and she's going to cover it with patches of um, wallpaper that measure 18 inches wide and 24 inches long. So it's, ideally, I guess, it's going to be little patches that look like this, all right? And we're going to try and figure out how many of these patches is Elaine going to need. A couple of ways to solve this. Um, let's do it, um, I don't know, one way. So we're going to start in, and do everything in feet. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the area of this rectangle. 
So we're going to do 5.5 times 4.5 because the area of a rectangle is found by doing length times width. So um, multiplying, 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 2 is 27. And then we're going to put a 0 because we're going to think of this as a four, uh, 40, not a 4, but a 40. And then 4 times 5 is 20. So there's our 2 and a 0. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 2 is 22. And now we're free to add. And we get 2,475. But don't forget, we have to divide by 100 because we have two decimal places. So we really get an area of 24.75 square feet. There. So this is 24.75 square feet. So now let's take a look at that, that um, the patches of wallpaper. And the patches of wallpaper are 18 inches by 24 inches. And in order to compare the table with the wallpaper, let's convert everything into feet. So 18 inches equals one and a half feet, and 24 inches equals 20, uh, two, oops, I wrote inches, two feet. So to find the area of that little rectangle, we're going to do length times width to find the area of that rectangle. So one and a half times two, boy, we could do that in our head. Uh, that is three square feet. So the area of this little patch is three square feet. And we want to know how many of these little patches can fit in this big table. So that means we're going to divide, and we're going to divide 24.75 by 3. So 3 goes into 24 eight times, and we have nothing left over. So now we're going to bring down this 7, and we're going to think of that as 7 tenths. So 3 goes into 7 tenths 2 tenths, or 2 times. So we're going to put a 2 here. And we're going to subtract, and we get 1. So that's 1 tenth. And we're going to bring down the 5, so we're going to think of that as 15 tenths. And 15 tenths divided by 3 is 5 tenths. And that leaves us nothing left over. So we can see that this answer says about 8, a little over 8 um, patches of wallpaper will be needed to completely fill in that table. And that is Grade 5, Module 2, Lesson 26, where we are using the standard algorithm to divide.